This is Lincoln Chemistry. It's a new school. It's the first new school in chemistry in the UK for decades. And it's been a tremendous opportunity to rethink our chemistry, to bring some fresh thinking to how we work with society, how we work with fundamental research, and how we train our students. I'm Professor Ian Scowan, Head of School of Chemistry at Lincoln. There's a whole host of different dimensions to what we provide. We provide sound, fundamental chemistry as one would expect, but we flavour that with uh, training our students through professional practice so that they can create solutions to problems. I'm Tasna Munshi, Director of Teaching and Learning and Deputy Head of School. So we have um, a central theme in our chemistry programmes, which is our um, industry-led challenges, professional practice. We teach these with multinational organisations around four key sectors, which are analytical, formulation, pharmaceutical and the energy and environmental sectors. Our students have just completed the National Student Survey and we've just had our results back from, from that survey. We're really pleased to say that we're number one in the country for student satisfaction for our chemistry students. My name is Andrew Gill. I'm the Commercial Manager in the School of Chemistry. One of the key aspects of chemistry at Lincoln is the ability to engage with the local industry and, and we're blessed around Lincoln of having a lot of different types of industry, whether that is agricultural industry or, or some of the, the heavy industry that's up near Immingham and uh, in the petroleum industry, chemical industry. And so we really want to try and engage as best we can with those kind of uh, companies, companies from those sectors to bring the best of our analytical science to bear on the questions that they actually have addressing what their needs are directly with the expertise that we have. My name is Arun Sutia and I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Lincoln. I use the principles of uh, quantum mechanics to understand chemistry at the atomic level. So what I do basically is to understand how catalyst works so as we know, catalysts are the uh, chemicals that uh, um, increases the rate of reaction. So we would like to know how they really behave at the atomic level. We need to know um, how they behave so that we can design some new catalysts, which are always of great importance for industries. We have uh, very powerful materials analysis, uh, aligning spectroscopy with thermal analysis. A diffractometer, a powder diffractometer is unique in the country in the number of configurations that it can come to. But more importantly than that, it's not just having the equipment, it's also having a team of leading instrument scientists who are the, uh, the forefront of their game, who knows how to devise and develop um, solutions to people's problems, design experiments, work with academics to help build them into these specialist solutions. I'm Robert Johnson, Senior Lecturer in Chemistry at the University of Lincoln. We're interested in studying chemistry within the confined spaces found in human cells because this chemistry is responsible for, for, for human life and so disruption to this chemistry can cause diseases. This piece of equipment here allows us to create an artificial uh, nanoreactor, an artificial space, essentially a very tiny beaker with nanometer dimensions. So what it allows us to do is to uh, pass small molecules such as DNA through the, through the beaker. They will actually block, block the flow of ions, block the flow of solution through that and we can use that to characterise those molecules. And the equipment that we have here, fantastic equipment we have here, enables us to study these processes by developing uh, models or reactors similar to human cells. My name is Louis Adriensens and I'm a lecturer in organic chemistry at the University of Lincoln. We look at new polymers, specifically polyurethanes, and in particular we're interested in understanding fundamentals about them, such as how the building blocks that we use to make them come together, the fundamentals of how they react, and also understanding the fundamental properties of these polymers. It's very nice to see how many of the students find some form of practical employment after the degree. So far we've had very good success with that. 
And yeah, it's been rewarding to see how many came out with good degrees and how many actually got good jobs afterwards. So one of the key aspects that we, that we need to keep an eye on is, is the time scale issue here and, and making sure that we deliver the results for industry when they need them because the time frame of industry and academia is often what uh, separates the two, two entities at times. We make sure that we're not like that, we, that we really turn results around as fast as we possibly can to get the industry what they need but more importantly when they want it and in a quality controlled environment. We feel we're very well set for the future, we have powerful capabilities here as we've described but importantly I think it's how we take that forward, how we drive the subject of chemistry with fundamental research and have an effect on the people who live around us uh, across the world.